Hello, everybody. Konnichiwa, minaboku wa Jeremy Das, Yaroshku, onegai shimasu. And uh, it's time for another Eurovision reaction video. This one I'm super excited for. As usual, I've listened to all of the songs ahead of time just to get a full feel of them because I think that doing those just reactions to just snippets of them doesn't give you the full experience of it. And uh, then, of course, you fall into this other thing, um, like in today's episode, we'll call it an episode, um, of the four videos that we're going to be watching, they are music videos and not the live performance videos. So things change even with that. But with the music videos, you get what the studio track will sound like. And of course, things change when it's live on stage, whether it's at a national final or at the Eurovision Song Cost Contest itself. So let's dive right into it. Today, we're going to talk about Israel's entry, Switzerland's entry, um, the UK's entry, and there was another one, uh, Austria's entry as well, too. Not in that order specifically. I like all four of the songs, um, but we'll talk about each one because they're all vastly different, but they're all actually pretty, pretty good and bring their own stuff to the table. So let's get started without further ado. I'm going to begin with... Unicorn by Noah Kirill. Now this song here is fun. I'm, I mean, it's got like, you know, like this kind of poppy sound. In a little bit of a sense, I kind of get like uh, Brook Ireland a bit, but this song is so much better than that one was. Um, the video's all over the place. There's a lot of like upside down and like right side up style stuff to it. This is obviously a part where the vocals, like it's a very powerful part. And then it turns into the poppy chorus. They drop the beat. It's coming up in just a second here. There we go. It's very poppy. And I love the pop stuff, as I've said before, but it has a really good feminine power anthem to it. We're getting a lot of that this year. Norway, uh, Czech Republic, this one. There's tons of them. Feminine, 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 like honestly, that's the part that was like teased to everybody too, the feminine, 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 but like, look, you, you got the whole thing as like upside down and right side up and everybody that's not her is like kind of dressed in black and she's the one that's the standout here she's the unicorn she's standing out she's very powerful i like this song i think it's fantastic anyways so that one right there is a bop um it's gone right up there in my top 10. Uh, i do think it's going to end up being a top 10 finisher um my own opinion here and uh, i really really hope that it does well it's a fun song i loved it from the moment that i watched it sometimes like i said before it does take me a little while to warm up to a song but this one for whatever reason just is ticking off like all the little boxes of oh yeah i like that oh i like that oh okay the song has changed here it's not all the same thing uh the st standout here she's got great vocals but again it's all going to come down to what her stage performance is as we've seen before with many other entries um, where the song seems pretty powerful but it doesn't always mean that it's going to do well unless they perform properly on and I say properly on stage but perform well on stage so next up I want to talk about Switzerland's entry this one here is one of those ones that gives me the same vibes as um last year's Switzerland song, which was Boys Don't Cry. Uh, like the first line he's talking about when we were boys, we played with soldiers and stuff. This is definitely one of those war style songs or anti-war style songs. Um, I also get like a to l'univers um, feeling from it, like a vibe from John's Tears back in the day there. <laughs> back in the day, just a couple years ago. Um, also like uh, 1966 by Jamala and uh, Heroes by Manzer Merlo. So there, there's just a lot of little elements here. Plus, Boys Don't Cry. Um, I do have a feeling that this song is going to do better than Boys Do Cry did last year. I don't understand the hate for that song. Like, the juries loved that song. For some reason, the televoters didn't. And, but it led to that magical moment where Sam Ryder jumped up and go, went and gave um, uh, Marius Bear a hug. And such a sweet, sweet moment. What a generous man to go and do that. And, like, you know... You get zero points from the televote. It's It's got to be soul-crushing. 
This song I do think is going to do better. Um, it's interesting that uh, Switzerland's decided to go with an English song again. A lot of the time they tend to do s French, I guess. Not always, though. I mean, I still think that one of my favorite Switzerland songs of all time, though, is one of the strange ones. Yes, I love Celine Dion, Ne, parte pas, ne partez pas sans moi, but I think my favorite one to date still is Vampires Are Alive by DJ Bobo. Um, it's just so silly and bizarre and different and just fun and energetic and i love that kind of stuff but this song here stands a pretty good chance i don't think it's going to be a top 10 finisher unfortunately um it's it's going to be kind of mid-range most most likely but that's my prediction but given the kind of climate in europe right now with the wars and stuff going on i, I don't know i i I'm, I'm not thinking it's going to be a top 10 finisher. What will be a top 10 finisher, I think, is this year's answer to uh, last year's Norwegian entry, which, of course, was Give the Wolf a Banana. And for this year, it is Who the Hell is Edgar? And this song is coming from Austria. And it is bonkers crazy. I love it. It's a song about Edgar Allan Poe in a sense. You look at it, you're like, okay, these so lyrics don't make much sense and stuff, but they do. If you listen to it, it tells a story of how difficult it is. It's like a rhetoric about how difficult it is for songwriters, singers to make money with music in this day and age. They say 0 0.03 or 0 0.003. That's how much money an artist makes from Spotify streams per stream. And it's a fun way to deliver that message. It's just like, give the wolf a banana. You've got this weird, strange dance thing. If they do anything with this, it kind of looks ridiculous, but it sticks in your head. Po, 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 po. Like, po, 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 po. Like, I don't know. It's a fun song. It's a dancey song. It gets you into it. The first time watching this, I'm like, oh yeah, I like this one. It's awesome. I wasn't sure what to expect, but when Wee Wee Blogs was talking about it, and saying it was a bop and everybody's like super excited about it. This is one of my top five entries now here. It's just, it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> and you know, when they say who the hell is Edgar, what I get from that is there's a song, I think it was by an Australian band, maybe it was Australian, but uh, Alice, who the is Alice? Like, I don't know if you've heard that one. It's like a bar song a kind of thing. There you go, 0 0.003. Anyway, that's a kind of a, they're, they're talking about how much money an artist makes on Spotify per stream. I think that's, that's what the significance of it is. Uh, using Edgar Allan Poe in there, a very famous writer with this bop of a song and just talking about in general uh, that it's, it's a commentary on how hard it is for musicians nowadays. And I love that. I love how it is presented. And uh, I, I think it has a really, really good chance. One thing I wanted to say as well, too, about uh, Unicorn. Uh, maybe I should go back to that one for a second, because I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, there is a part in it that reminds me very much of Chanel with Slow Mo. And it's actually this part right over here. Um, you have a dance break and she's doing this. So if she does this on stage like Chanel did with Slow Mo, I think that this is this year's example or not example it's this year's version of slow-mo um with the dance break i think it's going to do very very well uh depending on how her vocals are of course to after the dancing or during the dancing how they set it up um like chanel was just amazing she blew everybody away with the performance this year and i think that uh, noah kirill has potential to do that as well too so this song um again is the first one i talked about just in case there was any confusion um from israel and i think this one is definitely going to be a top 10 material song like it is wonderful it's amazing and uh i i love it and I think other people are going to love it as well, too. Uh, it's right up there um, for my picks of Israeli songs, like Toy um, by Netta. And I just love it. I can't say really enough about it.
Finally, we're going to talk about the UK entry. Now, I will say that I was a little disappointed initially when I heard that Rina Sawayama was not the choice for the UK entry this year. Um, apparently, UK does this every once in a while. They'll kind of like kind of put little bits and pieces out there like, oh, this might be the artist, but they're not. Oh, this might be the one. Maybe, but they're not. And it just, you know, and then we got yesterday um, at the time of recording this, there were little hints dropped that, oh, um, May Muller is going to be the one that's going to be performing for UK for sure. Blah, blah, blah. The media outlets picked up, picked it up. And uh, then it was announced officially that she is performing for the UK this year. The song is called I Wrote a Song. And it's one of those songs like um, she's going through a breakup. And instead of like getting upset about it, instead of doing damage and stuff, she wrote a song, kind of like your stereotypical thing of any Taylor Swift song is like that. Literally, Taylor Swift writes about breakups all the time. It is what it is. It's a fun song. Um, I don't think it's going to be like it, they're not going to be first, second or third with this. It's such a generic sounding pop song. And a lot of people are speculating that the reason the UK is choosing this one um, is because they're hosting Eurovision this year. And there's a long rumored tradition that the host countries don't want to have to host it again with risk of winning. Look what happened with Ireland. Ireland hosted it three years in a row in the 90s, skipped a year and then hosted it again. And it almost bankrupted them, allegedly. So I could see why UK would want to play it safe. So maybe like a higher placing one, maybe top 10. I don't think so. I think it's going to be like less than that. But I don't think it's going to be like completely zero either. There's other songs that are incredibly mediocre, like some of the band songs. Not B-A-N-N-E-D, but like B-A-N-D, the, the bands. And this one is fun. It's, it's a bop, but it is, and it would do good on the radio, I think, too. But in general, like given the strong entries that we've seen in general here like who the hell is edgar uh my sister's crown queen of the kings uh if loreen if when loreen gets crowned as the swedish entrant with tattoo um i know i'm <laughs> i shouldn't say things like that but that song is powerful man let me tell you i love that song she is giving major competition to everybody else in the Melita Festival. And so I predict Laureen will win. And if she doesn't, I will really be surprised and disappointed. That's just my own opinion. Um, but assuming that she wins, I, I think my top four right now are Tattoo, uh, Alessandra with Queen of Kings, My Sister's Crown, by Vesna for Czech Republic and now who the hell is Edgar from Australia Austria not Australia Austria um hopefully they do a better performance than Austria's entry last year I really liked Halo like that song was amazing the studio version was amazing but it really fell flat in the performance aspect and that kind of killed them so We'll see how these songs do. Again, all four of these are really good songs. Um, I just think the weakest one, if I had to say a weakest one, is the UK one. Um, it, it just doesn't have that same pizzazz as Spaceman had last year by Sam Ryder. So anyway, that's these four songs. I think the rest of the countries are putting theirs out by the end of this weekend. I know Melody Festival is this weekend. Azerbaijan will have theirs out. Greece's was held up because of a lawsuit, but that got thrown out now. So that's coming out tomorrow. And uh, oh, who else is? Oh, uh, Armenia we're waiting on as well, too. I'm not sure if there's anybody else. I know the big five all have theirs out there. But let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your um, choices, what you think of these songs and stuff. And let's have a fun conversation. Conversation, and I will see you guys next time.